Welcome back to this the live the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. With me, I have Professor Anthony Killer, Professor of Strategy and Development and Institute Director at the Commonwealth Institute of Advanced and Professional Studies. I have Professor David Awurawo, Professor of International Relations and Strategic Studies at the University of Lagos, as well as Okpayemi Adamolekun, Executive Director of Isinav. Well, good to have you uh, all here today. Uh, well, we've had three guests on the program. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Claudio Kwefa, doing a post uh, for scarcity uh, uh, review. Then we had Mogaji uh, Goyega Dejumo, a member of the Eminent Elders Forum, commenting on uh, uh, the uh, Supreme Court ruling uh, on local government autonomy and also the proposed creation of the Ministry of Livestock uh, uh, Development. And then, you know, last but not the least, we had Professor Jidofo Adibe commenting on the attempted assassination of uh, President Donald Trump uh, at a campaign in Pennsylvania, in, in uh, you know, uh, uh, Butler County, uh, Pennsylvania. And then also uh, President Ruto's decision uh, to offload members of his uh, cabinet. <laughs> well, let me start with you. Yeah, me had right on the Well, I think I'll start with Kenya. That continues to inspire and encourage. I mean, I heard the commentary that will they be appeased? He says he doesn't think the Gen Z would be. And I think there's something to be said um, for a singular, a single issue campaign. For us, I bring back our girls is one of the things that we say we talk about. That bring back our girls as a single issue campaign, campaigning for the return of the Chipok girls, who by extension represent other abducted or missing people in Nigeria. So for the Kenyan youth, it's Ruto Mosco because of what he symbolizes, um, administration symbolizing corruption, lack of care for the people. And so if in the interim they've gotten the finance bill repealed, they've gotten the IG of police, who was asked to resign and he obeyed, quote unquote, um, and the cabinet fired. I think it's, it says a lot in terms of uh, what we call the office of the citizen. The citizens are saying we're the ones that gave you power and trust. We've decided that you're unable to use that power for our own good. And so we're asking you to relinquish it. What's interesting is that this might be a long play for 2026 because he just reconstituted, he just began the process to reconstitute their election um, monitoring, is it? No, not monitoring, election management body. So even if he steps down today, Kenya cannot have elections for maybe another 60 days, if, if, if that, because that the body to conduct elections is not legally constituted. So we go from there to Trump. And a uh, very interesting turn of events. I mean, Biden has been under incredible pressure to, to step down. Um, and people on both sides of the divide, if you step down, can be seen as a hero of a sort, elder statesman, putting the country above yourself. Um, and if you stay, and it's also beginning to cost him financially. First, it was just chatter. Now, I think of two days ago, $90 million of a pack was being withheld for the Democratic Party if it continues to be their candidate. So it'll be interesting to see how Biden responds in, in the fact that at the back of what has also happened with the assassin, I mean, everybody loves a hero, no matter if the person is muffled-topped, orange-haired, or, or whatever, or Superman. Everybody loves a hero. So getting up from that, pumping the fist in the air, um, this is the fighter America needs. The narrative is right in itself. Then add a bit of, I mean, I saw a photograph that talked about the way the light shone on his face. And then you saw him in the bosom of God. So also the religious angle to God preserving his life. I mean, I can't even imagine what church in some Trump belt areas will look like today. That Thanksgiving will be of another, on another. If it was, if it was a Niger church, uh -uh. that music, one hour of just thanking God, people rolling on the floor, Thanksgiving offering like five times, full on for what God has done in the life of our brother, Donald Trump. Even myself. Anyway, <laughs> move on that to... Livestock ministry. I mean, the only thing I have to say about that is what happened to the Ross O'Hare report? I thought we were streamlining. <laughs> we were streamlining our expenses. I thought we didn't have money. But yet, this administration decides we want to set up yet another ministry, create yet another minister and the paraphernalia. I'm sorry, I don't understand why this, whatever we're trying to solve, 
cannot be under the Ministry of Agriculture. That one fails me, so I have nothing else to say about that. And then what else did we start with? Um, LG. Well. Oh, before we go to FUEL, okay. local government. I have, oh, okay. I have a bit to say about that. It's interesting the people that you listed that support the judgment and think it's in the right direction. Is it in the right direction for the local government of Nigeria to have autonomy, to be able to manage their own accounts, to be able to run their affairs without the interference of the state government? Certainly. That's why if we look at our local government elections, Delta results, are they out yet? I'm sure it was a clean sweep by the state party. Well, we don't know, <laughs> we don't know yet. yet. Okay. Um, so we, we've seen that. And so do we want local government officers to be people who are not beholden to the state, who feel that they're connected to, to the people that they serve? That's why in a place like Lagos, you'll have someone who's a local government chairman in one community and live in another, because the community where he's from, he thinks that he's a bit above that. So is the spirit of true independence, as we like the words, federalism, um, local governments doing their bit, state government doing their bit, and federal governments which uh, just focus on, on national issues, certainly. But I am quite opposed to doing that by what would seem to be an amendment to the Constitution. I haven't read the judgment, but what is clear in the Constitution is that there's a joint state account, and that local governments deserve their money, but they should be paid into joint state accounts, and the states will then disperse it. Obviously, the Auditor General of the state will then audit their accounts at the end of the year. State governments, in their stubbornness, have repeatedly refused to give local governments their money. And local governments, in their thank you, Baba Sokwe, for giving me local government chairmanship role, have refused to ask for it. The gentleman in Ogun who was asking, who was the governor in Ogun again? Abiodu for his money, got sent to jail, got removed and got jailed. So I guess for the people who want to keep their offices, you don't complain that you're not getting your money. But this judge, what we would seem, again, I haven't read the judgment because um, the full judgment hasn't been released. What it would seem is that it is saying that the federal government should directly give to local government their money. So question number one is what then happens to the joint state account if the local government is directly given to money? On the back of that, people are getting excited and saying that now that local governments are getting their money directly, the federal government should also, i.e. INEC, should also conduct ele elections for local governments. And I'm saying that we cannot be saying we want a federating, federating unit. So what is that English? Is that what they're called? Federating unit. A federation. Less power at the federal level. And we want things like state police and things of that nature. But yet we want the local government purse to be umbilical cord directly tied to the federal government. In addition to that, we want the federal government to be running elections at the local government level. In addition to that, because we're excited about this local government financial autonomy, we're not paying attention to what I would say is an amendment to the Constitution. There's a process to amend the Constitution. And I personally have personal beef with the Supreme Court, maybe not the Supreme Court, because they've just added 11 people. It's the same Supreme Court that Dr. Abati was correcting me when I said they did something illegal that allowed um, Apabio to become a senator and, by extension, Senate president. They broke the law at that point. If we are now amending the Constitution just ever so slightly, it's another breaking of the law. And this is something seemingly minor, because all of us are excited about local government. But I will say, and I will put it on record, if we continue to allow the Supreme Court, which is the highest body, judicial law making body, not law making, but law, judicial, judicial body in this country. Sorry? The interpreter. Uh -huh, the law interpreters, yeah, or, yeah. If we continue to allow the Supreme Court to gingerly tweak with our constitution, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, by the time they do something that all of us are like, no, 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 you can't do that, it'll be a bit late because they'll have gotten very comfortable with playing with the laws. And neither the National Assembly, as we've seen our nice National Assembly members, nor the executive who are backing them has allowed them. And then citizens, and unfortunately the judiciary is not the arm of government that citizens have a direct say on. So me, I'm just saying, you know, let everybody's eyes be shining well at this point in time. What's the next thing? Cues, nothing to say. Let them, I've, I've spoken okay. enough. Professor Kela. <laughs> well, well, let me start from where she did not go to the full scarcity thing. Um, I think there are too many people in this country in position of power that seem to specialize in making it simple complicated for the purpose of obtaining worse than 
bad. Um, the, 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 we need to simplify a bit if we want to solve big problems. The problem we have with fuel are twofold. On one side, it is supply side. It is a matter of abundance of not of enough petrol. The other side is logistics, is distribution. And if you can have somebody that can look at it that way, then we're going to be able to solve it. Um, Dr. Kwefa is right when he says you don't have this issue with diesel because the number of people bringing diesel in are, are more people. So you don't have the idea that somebody's hoarding it or somebody's playing with the price because the market is open and there are more suppliers. But he's wrong when he tries to say on principle, I will say I'm not paying this price. I don't need to say that. The market should allow forces to do that. But that will happen where there is enough. Even if people are evil and they're ordering petrol or, um, or any other kind of thing, if there is enough quantity in the market, they won't be able to do that. Have you seen the way petrol attendants, when there is petrol, that they'll be calling you and begging you to come? Then the moment there is scarcity, they become so nasty. They, they, their faces come ugly and their hearts <coughs> vicious and their mind dull, the, the way they act. Very vexatious um, kind of metamorphosis that you see when there is scarcity. But the problem is that somebody, who's the Minister for Petroleum now? President. Well, shame on him. Because the, this issue, somebody just sit down and say, this is what we're going to do in the mid and the long term. The real solution we have, or that we need in Nigeria, is a situation where our supplies should not be for usage, but to top up our storage. So that whatever happens, we don't feel the effect. At the moment, we seem to be living hand to mouth. And we need that kind of holistic, strategic approach to solve this problem, you know. I, I stop there. The, um, and, and, but, but that, I think, is a solution. We need to simplify it that way and act in depth uh, in that. For the local government things, I mean, it is difficult for me, for somebody like me, who has always advocated, um, you know, for devolution of power and autonomy, to go against the local government thing. Because in reality, what it does is that it brings to cognizance the local government. Unfortunately, it starts with money. But then money is what most of this is about. You know, let's look at it that way. Because in reality, what it says is that we recognize the local government and we send the money directly to them. You say, what happens to the joint account? If the joint account is made of money of local government and state, why should state the care? Why should state government care if local government money is not coming in anymore? So they're saying, give it to us. No, give it to me. Then I divide it for us. All of a sudden, I say, no. You don't need to give it to you anymore. We'll give it to the people directly themselves. If I don't have intention of fiddling in it, why should I care that it's not coming to me? Everybody get their own, and I get on with my the own as well. The governor said they don't care, that they're very happy. Interesting point, exactly. And the governor says there's other people with claim. With the exception of Makene, of your state. Well, one out of 36 is not what bad. Was his, what was his basis? He and says it's a distraction. He understands it. Yeah, he, he, yes, he really does. That the emphasis should be on productivity. On yeah, productivity. Yeah, that's what I so we can't say one. No, the forum. The forum for spoke. For now. Yeah. No, but the, the, the forum, forum spoke. spoke. No, all of them. it was governor of Kwara. Who spoke? I spoke on behalf of the forum. Oh, well, he spoke the on forum, behalf of the forum. The forum is going, going to meet, meet yeah. on Wednesday. And we shall and see. And then we will know the position of the, of but, the other government. But for now, the governor said so. But let's even see our citizens. I think logic dictates that it is not as bad as those against it are trying to make. Because the idea that they have a joint account and they say the money doesn't go there shouldn't be. But it's in the create. Constitution, that's the issue. I mean, and well, I'm going to go to the Constitution, okay. but in terms of the substance, this shouldn't be such a force. Because when you say we should shine our eye, we should really shine it. Why should somebody want to be the one that is distributing money for others if they want to let a bit stay in their finger? That's not the issue. We should look though. at it that way. If we now go to the method, that is where there is a problem. Mm. First off, why would the federal government go to court instead of passing a law to the, um, to the National Assembly? Some of us whispered to me, some of you very close to people who did that, that it's a faster and quicker way. But we should be very careful with this exactly. faster and quicker way. That's, um, that's something a bit dangerous, even, even when you get what you desire. Precisely. If you can think of tomorrow, I want to be on the record that I embrace local government autonomy. You know, I'm, I'm really for it. But then I'm a bit worried about the method, because sometimes you get what you want, and you lose what you want as well, what, you, what is there. The risk is there. The other point is that this judicial activism of the judges worries one a bit as well because perhaps they should have just sent it back to the National Assembly to say this is a constitutional matter. These are questions of method, but it should all both be said. There's also a political underlining here for those who are against it, which is a matter of trust. There is a fear that with this method, mm. 
the president exactly. is creating 774 campaign managers <laughs> who will then bypass their governor and work directly with them. There is a, there is a, there's that fear. But for those who are not interested in the partisan thing, there's a concern that we, and here making this point makes sense, that instead of talking about productivity, we're talking of doling money. We're talking of where they're getting money from. I would say to McIndy and people who think like them, especially people who are not politicians who are really you know, thinking about it in a global way that it's a first step. But if we can get local government to be recognized as real entity, now we've talked about their duty, uh, sorry, about their rights. The next step is talk about their duty. And I think you, know, I, I get, you get to one point in life when you start to understand the gradual approach. That is where we are for this matter. Now, it won't be radical, so that, that's the next step for them to take. And, so let's see how it goes on that way. That's for local government area. The US, well, I don't know. I mean, the, I think this clumsy shooter, I don't know if he's dead or not. I mean, you can't say somebody should be no, a better shooter. he was shot dead. He was shot dead, Crooks. he's dead. Acting in a crooked manner, he ended up like a crook. Like a crook as well. I mean, you can't say somebody should be a better shooter, but you know, because they've done something bad. The, the, two things, number one is that, unfortunately for, Republic, uh, for Democrats, for the next few days, this gives Trump some leverage, you know, because he's a apparent victim. They can only hope he's, he overdoes it and overmilks it and people see through it. That's on one side. The other side, though, is a violent thing. You know, they, violence is possible in America, but it's not as common as, you know, one of the speakers try to make it. You, you can list it. If you have one, you know, in every five, ten years, that doesn't make it a common thing. Mm. It's a rare thing. But the point here is that one is not surprised that it has happened. The lesson for all those going into politics is to avoid to be so divisive, to be so polarizing. And I say this with tongue in the cheek, because while everybody say they're for unity, you know, I, I do not think I'm a man of unity. I don't believe in all that unity thing. I think partisan politics should be divisive, but it should be divisive on argument on stance. We, we, all this idea, there's one horrible word people use in Nigeria. They say somebody's detribalized. One of, that's one of the worst words in English language. Right. It's a terrible word. Well, the tribal is already bad. The tribal is even worse. Like, <laughs> there's nothing crazy about it. The, people should be able to be different, but peacefully in a civic way. Our differences should be ideas and ideological. So no to violence. It will be interesting to see how the Democrats will, will play it. Let us see if Boris Arrow is happy that Trump is alive. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe I should just start, uh, start uh, with that. Um, what has happened is uh, disheartening. Um, violence of this kind uh, should never be applauded. Um, it's unfortunate that what has happened has happened. Yeah, I agree with you that uh, violence in American politics is not as uh, common, regular, com you know, acceptable, so to speak, as our guest, uh, the professor, uh, you know, almost made it seem. Uh, even the examples he cited, over 200, 300 years, uh, you can count your, with your fingertips. Uh, so what has happened is, is bad, and um, we hope that uh, moving forward, the candidates will be less you know, divisive. He also said that uh, you know, uh, politics and elections are like, um, elections are politics, you know, like war without uh, guns. Uh, it shouldn't, it, it doesn't have to be so. Um, Yes, you, are, you, know, you, you want to gain power, you are contesting for power, but you have to be civil about it. I mean, look, Obama versus McCain, they disagreed without, without becoming disagreeable. That is how it, you know, it should be, decency. And we speak of uh, Trump, yes, a superman. Oh, everybody is hailing the superman. The way people are hailing the superman tells me that humanity is still very unintelligent. Yes. Superman, you have courage. And courage is somewhere in between cowardice and rashness. That is what you hail, not Superman. What does Superman bring to the table? The How does being a Superman, you know, yeah. Yeah, a, a, a courageous person? Frederick Nietzsche. Not yes. His, yes. Frederick like, no. Nietzsche. Yeah. Roger Barry Superman. Yes. yes. I mean, it still simply shows that humanity is so sister and And pronounced the death of God. Yes. That well, man should be the Superman. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so, well. Courageous, yes, but Superman, that people are still carried away by the frenzy. Oh, he came out and he clinched his feet, and everybody is a frenzy. It just shows that humanity is just it's so unintelligent. 
Superman. All fans looking for parents. What does he bring to? How does he improve looking the quality of life of uh, of people? And of course, whether we like it or not, it will affect uh, you know yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. Like some of those who will not have come and say, oh, we want to get the Superman to become uh, you know the president. Well, unfortunately, that that is the reality we are confronted with. Um, we're moving forward. Say homo. Yeah, the ele tesos. yeah. The elections are still far away. Um, Nietzsche's uh, you know postulation, by the way. Again, um, neither here nor there. Well, it became the source um, of fascism, Nazism. Exactly. And those were the uh -huh. references yeah. that yeah. we were looking at. Let's leave that. Yeah. Let's leave that. It's not going to so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but we <laughs> hope that uh, there will be more decency, more decorum. Trump's presence yeah. in the political district has helpful. been very, very divisive. And, you know, all of this violence, whether we like it or not, is linked to it, even though it was the one that eventually was attacked. Um, let's hope that there will be more calmness, more reasonableness. If you want to serve, I've said this several times, if your intention is to serve, must you, you know, be that desperate about gaining power? But that can be said of both Biden and Trump. I yes, I'm, and I'm speaking, with, I'm, I'm speaking with respect both, to both. Exactly, to both, yes. exactly. But if of course, the, the, the Trump's zone is a bit different because of, you know, the frenzy and then the, the, the way it has gone on since it started, yeah. uh -huh, you know. Uh, that of Biden is just because well, of the politicians lie. Yes. It just tells you that when politicians say, I just want to do it for safe, they, they, they lie. A lot of time, the ambition is bigger than the desire so to So, politics of bitterness, Americans should learn. They should learn from uh, President Jonathan's, uh, you know, aphorism. Uh, the, the, the power for anybody should not be worth the blood of anyone. Yeah. Three have died already, and then not, not a single person more should die, you know, in the course of these uh, this campaigns. For Kenya, well, let's hope that Ruto survives, and let's hope that Ruto has learned his lessons. And I'm surprised that Ruto didn't understand the, the dynamics of society uh, before, you know, jumping into that. Bro, please uh, go ahead. Why, why should we hope Ruto should survive? So I'm just sorry. <laughs> well, because, because it seems to be walking back. Yeah. Uh, walking back, and it seems to now be listening to, you know, the people. Ah. Really? And it, it would be shocking to expect that he does anything close to what he, what he did the other week. Again. Okay. And you know, I'm always very cautious about removing leaders. Yeah, you, uh, you are never, you are never too sure of who What's comes. Coming uh -huh. after that. You take away the master and you the mistress <laughs> and you gain a master. Uh -huh. So if the man is walking back and is trying to listen to the people, yeah, well, yeah, we can allow him. Uh, let's see what he yeah, brings to the table moving forward. That, that's my own you know. Yeah. Then fuel, fuel is, is linked to crude, and I'm shocked that as we speak, our a daily production of crude is still less than 1.3 million barrels per day. It links everything about national life, you know, what government earns, the poverty in the land, exchange rates, and everything. Um, uh, we need to strengthen domestic refining. Uh, a, a private one is there now, he's crying, he doesn't have crude, enough crude. The other ones I say, where we come on stream, which are where we'll get crude, and it is shocking. So, what I just want to say about that, logistic flood, the way, that is just by the way, is that government needs to declare a state of emergency on oil production. <laughs> so that all of those uh, issues, we'll see people wear um, uh, rim boots and tour the place, and then uh, at the end of the day, production has not improved. Just look at what it was when we had 2.2 million barrels per day, and now that we're having just 1.2, 1.3 million barrels per day, that's 1 million barrels per day lost. And over the last eight, nine years, Population has increased, our needs have increased. So you can understand why the economy has, as, as it is. Of course, dollar is also tied to it, Naira to dollar and all that. So my take is that first and foremost, uh, the government needs to declare some emergency on you know, all of those things that are hindering oil production. When that takes place, they will be crude for refineries. And then it's only when we begin to locally really refine you know, that we can begin to talk of uh, uh, free market and all. Because as you speak, the, the government not say that they spent about two, three trillion last year on, on subsidy, and in 2024 they spent 5.4 trillion uh, uh, naira. That shows that the free market thing we are even talking about doesn't even exist. The gov I mean, the price is fixed. But bro, you say, the, the yes. free market thing you say doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. Yeah, okay, it doesn't exist. It doesn't but exist. But we're not even able to store enough. So whether it's free market or it's not free market, can we at least fill the barrack? Can we fill the tank? You know, just like people have tanks of diesel in their house that never goes down. So I think part of the problem is that the people in government do not queue for petrol. <laughs> they don't live in it directly. Maybe if they had, because I've been in Abuja, if everybody going to any government house, starting from the president to ministers, had to do that queue, 
the situation will be different. Yes, exactly. sure. So, Dr. Abadi, just before I round off. Yes, please. Um, local government autonomy. What the Supreme Court ruling is, is fine, but Supreme Court trying to make the law, every sensible person should condemn it. Section 162 of the Constitution is very, very clear about that joint account thing. And what, it, what the Supreme Court seems to have done is to create a law. Mm -hmm. Cancel that law. Mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is very, very so dangerous. Condemned. That is dangerous. We should condemn it <laughs> until the law is amended. Yeah. We should not heal that aspect of the ruling of the Supreme Court. Prof is on my side today. Yes. Oh, I love it. And then yeah. livestock. <laughs> we don't need the Ministry for Livestock. Oh. We don't need the Ministry for Livestock. A no, section of fishery will be part of it. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> we are people uh, in. Uh, we so we do have, have uh, plenty of fish. Yes. yes. So what does the Ministry of Agriculture do? Exactly. This should, there should that be units within the, the, you know, there should be uh, divisions within the, the ministry. The ministry and of, it would, like uh, Yemi said, that is just the anti, yeah. that is just the opposite of the implementation of the Orosia report. If I, this one is what during the week said, government abandons. Uh, Orosia report creates livestock <laughs> ministry. That's the headline. It won't disappoint in the country. Well, we are now into journalism. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you. I'm <laughs> you have become a sub editor. <laughs> I'm, I'm just <laughs> telling you <laughs> the, con the contradiction. <laughs> that will have just been enough. And you know what we actually need is the bare practices as far as all of this cattle thing is handled. Let us get, let us just, you know, have, Bingy. let us ranch. Let us remove politics. If a state does not want to give land for ranching, leave it. Niger State alone is more than all the five southeast states combined. There is, there, there, there is land enough in those states where the owners of the cattle and those who carry them all over the place are. So you think they don't know? What so you, what, 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 why, why land in Anambra or land in uh, Imo oh. be the issue? Or land in Lagos or Ogo? When there is land enough Niger. where... You know, yeah, those who own this cattle, no, there's no, let's not make politics of this, so that those who carry this cattle can live a good life. It's, when they talk about culture, culture is dynamic. R somebody roaming, roaming about from Sokoto to, okay. uh, to Lagos, does it make sense? When you, when you rank, he stays there, he's educated, he's able to even maximize, you know, I live the high quality of life. Are you talking about one culture? Probably culture is dynamic. There is something we need to call this thing out. If we keep making it like a conversation that is sensible, people will not get it. I think somebody, I, somebody has to say, the creation of the Minister of Livestock is a silly idea. And silly? I take yes, and I take responsibility silly for that. Yeah. But you see, but you see, but you see I, I told the Mogadi Adejumo yes. that the Minister of Agriculture, yes. Abubakar Kiari, yes. he says they are still working out the details. Mm. And that in about two weeks' time, the uh, food security uh, unit set up by the president and the National Council on the Economy yes. will come together and give Nigerians a blueprint about food security. Now, I ask them, is it not the case that people are jumping ahead of the gun, uh, reaching conclusions about something on which the said, government has no. not provided? There is, a, the propo wait, wait, there is wait, wait. a proposal Richard, for the creation of a ministry. And that one is still at the level of a proposal. Uh, yes, but like that, the people and is the proposal we're even talking about? The people that the idea. The gun, did they put their hand in the mouth of the people to say, Ministry of Livestock, or did they go into their head they to go and it. say Ministry of hey, Livestock? But wait for the details first. That's they are, what are they, they are paid saying. to think aloud, or they are paid to, <laughs> to do deliver, their notes to deliver and results. speak with art. They are using Nigeria to think aloud. No, I don't even know. No, there's something called flying the kite mm. in government. Okay, so we're helping them to strike the kite down. That's mm. what mm. we're doing here. Yeah, don't strike the kite down. Let no, let part of the strategy of governance is that you can fly the kite. Hey, we're striking mm. it down. Then the people react and then you weigh okay. their okay. reaction. Okay, well, yeah, the kite, tell the kite is silly, bring it down. And you can see the way we are reacting. Okay. So now we Before we go forward, I really wanted to say this quickly. Adamawa State has brought a, a case to the Supreme Court to interpret the section of 162, 162, 162 yeah, to say 162. that it is only a it is only by law that any revenue of the federal government can be withheld. Yeah. So the plan to withhold monies from caretaker local governments would be illegal, ah, is what they're, they're proposing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying that for the one about joint state accounts, it's very clear to me. For this one about caretaker committee, the law is also very clear the that local league. governments must be democratically elected. elected. So when you have a caretaker committee, it's not democratically elected, therefore it does not exist. Mm -hmm. So Adamawa states that's asking for clarity, James Ibori that's saying, well, the law is good, however, that caretaker one, don't do that. It's very clear. So why should we have caretaker committees when we have democratically elected 
chairman, they will get their money. So are they they are very right. They should be hoping they regard. don't have a judge <laughs> like you. Because your position is very clear. The constitution is very clear. And in this particular case, case Justice Emmanuel Agim, who read the lead judgment, uh, and the others, the lordships, they were upholding a precedent. Exactly. You know, the Supreme Court had ruled on so it before. Many times. That you cannot create your own uh, local government right. chairman. Mm -hmm. They have to be democratically yeah. elected. That was yeah. That's the language that in Section 7. Yeah. So yeah. that uh, uh, Adam Awa case mm -hmm. may be dismissed as frivolous, frivolous vexatious, <laughs> and, uh, an attempt to abuse the time mm -hmm. of but the But it's court. the same Supreme Court that is violating joint account, shall we? Let's just put that there. No. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> By saying they should give money directly to no, the government. No, the Supreme Court will insist. That it, that is an interpreting, yeah. it is interpreting the, the law of the, as is. Yes. Yeah, the law says there should be a joint state account now. So what are they interpreting? Well, okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just yeah. asking. Would they, would they uh, fall out? You know? I, I understand where the confusion is coming from. Okay. But I don't want to delay you by making my own commentary. Okay. Let's take one more subject. Search and rescue efforts are going on at the site of a school building collapse in Joss, the Plateau State capital where more than 20 persons are reported to have been confirmed killed, including teachers and students. Many more are dealing with various degrees of injury. The two-story structure that housed junior students of St. Academy School is said to have a total population of about 400 students, some of whom were writing examinations at the time of the tragic incident. So this is what we face all the time. Let me start with you, Professor Awurawo. Buildings collapse, but this one is so terrible because so many students in class died just because the building came down. It is so disturbing. It is so, so, so disturbing. Like one commentary mentioned that the only offense this student committed was that they went to school to seek knowledge. As simple as that. And scores of them have just died. And you know, it's linked to the point I've always made, that for Nigeria to really um, come out of the woods, to use the popular uh, uh, you know, phrase, um, Nigerians need ethical renaissance. People want to build, they build houses, they use substandard material. They do not bother about the possibility of that house collapsing and leading, causing the death of people. And we have it across. And the other side to it is, you know, our penchant for let us manage. Let, I get angry when I hear that word, let us manage. If you're not managing in terms of maximizing resources, fine. But to use the, man, the word manage in the sense in which you mean uh, substandard things uh, should be accepted uncritically, it is so, so annoying. The way around it, the government has made a couple of taken a couple of measures in the past uh, couple of hours. Um, this should be sustained. Houses, just the way they do in Lagos now, so many layers in trying to check what people do when they are constructing houses, whether they are you know uh, complying with the standards, and of course, if corruption is removed from it, um, it will yield positive result. But if corruption is there, people will build substantial houses. And, you know, uh, 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 they will give money to those who are supposed to uh, monitor. We come to the point I also made before about ethical renaissance. We should ensure that the best practices is what we adopt. And the government, of course, what has happened now, needs to wake up at different, in different states to ensure that substantial buildings are no longer allowed. We understand that in, in, in Plateau there are testing buildings also, apart from even the new ones being constructed. That should be replicated across the country so that such a thing like this will not have to happen again. Okay, let's wrap up with birthdays. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shenga on Saturday, Mark, yesterday that is, marked his 90th anniversary. To celebrate the literary icon on a special day, President Bola Tinumbu, who led the troubles, renamed the National Theatre in Lagos after him with the historical edifice now to be known as the Wale Shenga Centre for culture and the creative arts. President Tinubu described Shoyinka as one of the finest minds of his generation, committing to the highest standards of human enlightenment, but unyielding to injustice, oppression, and base impulses. Shoyinka is a globally celebrated playwright, novelist, poet, essayist, actor, singer, 
composer, <laughs> and documentarian. Well, I said it's a season of uh, birthdays. Yeah. Tomorrow, Chifolu Shegun oh, Oshoba, sure. an icon in the journalism profession, will be 85. Today, mm. the publisher of this day newspaper and yeah. chairman of Arise uh, News uh, is 65. So we have, uh, you know, all the icons, Cancerians, I think that's the horoscope sign, uh -huh. you know, celebrating their birthdays around uh, this time. Uh, as for, I congratulate all of them, uh, Professor Shoenka, uh, Chief Olusha Gonshoba, and uh, Prince Sunduka Obagbena. But as for Prince Sunduka Obagbena, so, I think after this program, we should just go to his house for implications. <laughs> I, I, I started this program by announcing implications. <laughs> and I don't want to go alone. Let's go together so that we have these implications. <laughs> yes, Yemi, yeah, quickly. Oh, yeah, just really good to see that um, Professor Shoenka is still well alive, still writing. Um, there's a movie adaptation of The Man Died that will be released later in the year. Looking forward to that. Got to see his, uh, the screen, well, screen. They call it a screening um, early in the week. And I think for me, what I also just want to say is that it's, it's good. I mean, the theatre is an appropriate name recognition. But I would have loved to see more things to celebrate him from the university's um, academia where he served. Um, Unilag was here for two years. Ife and, and UI didn't see much from... The program with Unilag. Uh, yeah, and the National uh, Association of Letters, yes. But from Ife and UI didn't see, didn't see any, anything. But it's not too late. I guess we can turn it into a year of, year of celebration. Okay, Prof, Prof. Well, congratulations to all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's good to have this kind of inspiring people um, celebrated. And above all, because with, it's good to celebrate people who you can actually see their achievement. There are too many people in Nigeria who are celebrated, but you can't really value their achievement. You say, what have they contributed to humanity? These ones that you've listed, you can touch and feel and, you know, and smell what they've contributed, which is a great thing. It is difficult to fault calling a theater after Wale Shoenka. I have a couple of problems with the length of the new name. <laughs> Maybe they should have just called it WS Theater, Wale ah. Shoenka Theater. Stop. But I also have a problem in changing the names of monuments. Mm. Maybe they should have built a new one and call it after him. We keep recycling old things. We need to do more. But well, let's go ahead. Professor Urao, well, as a rapper. What, what shall I say? Um, the literary works of Shoinka, I've read many of them. I've continued to be enamored by his uh, you know, uh, uh, ability in writing and all. And of course, these other ones have touched lives, and that is what is important, not even the single day celebration. Mm. You know, OK, thank you very much. Well, we will sit, uh, we'll stand up now and go for the implications. Some producers, and, some producers and directors have been saying they want to go with us. Let them stay in the office. They can have the, their own implications in the office. Thank you very much. You. You've been watching This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati. From my entire team here in Lagos, it's bye for now, and thank you very much for watching.